It was a gruesome discovery at this fence. Late Wednesday afternoon, as the sun was setting, two bicyclists approached. And at first, they said it looked like a scarecrow had been tied to the fence. Instead, the lifeless, savagely beaten body of 21-year-old Matthew Shepard, a University of Wyoming freshman, a gay man, barely alive tonight, in a coma, brain damaged, and on life support. Today, two young men, Russell Henderson and Aaron McKinney, who whispered an obscenity as he came into court, were charged. In the county of Albany. Kidnapped robbery and attempted murder. A hate crime, according to police, who say the two met Shepard in this Laramie bar, tricked him into believing they were gay too, then the three left together. It was 1 a.m. Wednesday morning, but Shepard, a small man, was allegedly beaten with the butt of a pistol, burned with cigarette butts, and finally tied spread eagle to the fence, left to die. Wyoming is known as the cowboy state. It's one of eight without a hate crime law. For the last five years here, state lawmakers have defeated attempts to legislate against hate, saying they didn't want to give preferential treatment to homosexuals. At the University of Wyoming here in Laramie, students say while there is tolerance on campus to those who are different, it's another story off campus. The homecoming parade at the University of Wyoming. After the band and the floats and the hoopla, a quiet reminder that something ugly happened here this week. We need to get out and show people that there are people that care. The homecoming parade doubled in size as more joined to make a statement against hate. This is a terrible crime against a person, no matter if he's black, color, gay, or white. You don't treat people that way. At the homecoming football game, 15,000 people stood in silence for Matthew Shepard. Less than two miles away, down a dusty country road, at the fence where the beating took place, another smaller sign that Shepard will not soon be forgotten here. Violence and hatred starts in small ways and grows and grows and grows. The cruelty and hate that was inflicted on Matthew Shepard cries out to each one of us to examine our lives and to do it honestly. The victim of what many people say was a hate crime in Wyoming this morning has died. 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was found beaten and unconscious last week near the University of Wyoming. Shepard was gay, and while police say robbery was the primary motive for the attack, gay rights groups call it a hate crime. Shepard remained on life support at a Colorado hospital until this morning when he passed away. A hospital spokesman said Shepard's family is grateful for support from around the world like the good, caring son that he was. Um, he was able to remove from them the guilt or stress of having to make that decision. They said that uh, he came into the world premature and he left the world premature. They were most grateful for the time that they had to spend gentlemen my name is Jim Peck I'm here today to be with my sister Judy her husband Dennis and the rest of the family as we say goodbye to a wonderful young man my nephew Matthew Shepard I will shortly introduce my sister Judy and my brother-in-law Dennis Shepard Matthew's parents they would like to make a statement on behalf of our family and all of those who knew and loved Matthew Please respect our decision that Matthew's memorial service today be closed to all but family members, our friends, and our invited guests. The shocking loss of Matthew and the worldwide attention to the circumstances that led to his untimely death demand that our family comes together in peace with privacy. Please allow us to comfort each other without distraction. We have made a concerted effort to make this solemn service accessible to you while still allowing us to pray for Matthew in peace. 
we know you all understand. The Shepherd family would appreciate it if the media honor this request and not bother those who come together to say farewell to Matthew. Lastly, we request that you refrain from questions or comments after Matthew's father, Dennis Shepherd, makes a brief statement on behalf of the family. Thank you for your restraint and your understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew's parents, Dennis and Judy Shepherd. Thank you very much. Before I read my statement, I would like to thank the press for respecting our privacy, both here and in Fort Collins, in these very trying times. On behalf of the Shepherd family, during this most difficult time, we are unable to fully express our appreciation for the kindness, concern, and professionalism of the Poudre Valley Hospital staff in Fort Collins. As shown by Mr. Ruland Stacy during his touching statement at the time of our son Matthew's passing, our appreciation as well must be expressed to the Albany County Sheriff's Department, the Laramie City Police Department, and the Ivinson Memorial Hospital in Laramie for their extraordinary help and respectful consideration. On behalf of our son, Matthew Shepard, we want to thank the citizens of the United States and the people of the world who have expressed their deepest sympathy and condolences to our family during these trying times. A person as caring and loving as our son, Matt, would be overwhelmed by what this incident has done to the hearts and souls of people around the world. Matthew is the type of person that if this had happened to another person, would have been the first on the scene to offer his help, his hope, and his heart to the family. We, the family, have no adequate way of expressing our gratitude for the thousands of email, comments, website messages, phone calls, and cards offering help, consolation, sympathy, and support that we have received. We are honored and touched beyond measure. Please understand and respect my family's request for a private and dignified farewell to our son today. Matt's family and friends loved him deeply, and we need to share a quiet goodbye with him. Matt himself would, been, would have been the first to honor another family's request if this had happened to someone else. We should try to remember that because Matt's last few minutes of consciousness, consciousness on earth may have been hell, his family and friends went more than ever to say their farewells to him in a peaceful, dignified, and loving manner. Once again, I must express our appreciation for the outpouring of concern about Matt's well-being during the last week as he fought for his life in the hospital. We'll never forget the love that the world has shared with his kind, loving son. Thank you. So say and spell your first and last name again for me. W-N Otwell, O-T-W-E-L-L. -L. And what church are you affiliated with? I'm the Heritage Baptist Church in Nacogdoches, Texas, or Mount Enterprise. I better say Mount Enterprise. They get mad, but I don't use Mount Enterprise. Tell me why you're here today. We're here to say that we're against the brutal killing of Matthew Shepard. But we're here mostly to say that we're against sodomy. We're against homosexuality. Been against it for years. My parents taught me better. The Bible teaches us better. We're here not to condone the killing. Anyone ought to be against that, even to an animal. No one has a right to be murdered like that. But we're here to stand against wickedness. They call us hate mongers, that's fine. We hate everything God hates. God hates the sin of sodomy. He hates sin and we hate sin. And we hate the sin of sodomy. Sodomy is, is a more wicked crime and more corrupt 
a sin against society than drugs, than alcohol, or literacy, for, because it's perversion. And we're here, we're here to take our stand, and it offends me. It personally offends me that we allow sodomy to run loose in this country, and it offends me this morning the state of Wyoming would fly their, would, would lower their, their, their flags half mass in, in the public school system to honor a sodomite. No one appreciates what happened, but at the same time, we don't honor our grandparents. We don't honor our fathers who died in, in, in the wars. We don't honor our mothers who, and grandparents who get killed, brutally killed, or raped. We don't do this. To, we, we make, we're discriminating here. And I think it's wrong, it, it's, it's ridiculous, and it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's wickedness on the governor's part of the state of Wyoming uh, to say to the public school system, lower your flags to half mass. I think, I think it's wicked in this country. What about the folks who say this isn't the forum, that this should be for the family, protest some, some other time, not here? To start with, I don't think it ought to even been in the church. I don't think there's no such thing as a Christian sodomite. You can't die and go to heaven being a sodomite. You have to repent and be born again to go to heaven. I used to be in sin. I danced on every da dance floor in southwest Arkansas and San Diego, California, but I had been drunk. I had to get born again and get out of my drunken stupor and get off the dance floor and to serve God. And God changed my life from a life of sin and wickedness to a life that was godly and holy. Not perfect, but godly and holy. And in Sodom, it's sin and wickedness. And if that man didn't repent before he died, he's in hell today. Why here, though? Why now? Because this is an opportunity that you have to continue to stand against wickedness. Now, the government will use this opportunity, just like the state of Wyoming is using this opportunity, and the, and the gay activists to get this hate crime bill in. I think it's stupid that we want to pass a hate crime law when killing is killing. My life is as important as anybody's life. Your life is as important as anybody's life. What makes a gay person or a black person or a minority any more important than anyone else in this world? For Matthew Shepard's family, don't you think that this taking the stand here at this time, not saying that it, you shouldn't protest when you want to protest, but wouldn't that be hurtful for them? I think, I think this mother and these parents need to face reality. They didn't raise him right. They didn't teach him right. And the Bible said a child left himself brings his mother to shame, Proverbs 29, 15. This, this, he lived like he died. He died in shame. He lived in shame. He died in shame. And his parents ought to be ashamed. They ought to be ashamed to even identify him as a Christian. It, it's a shame to even have his funeral in this church house over here. Regardless of whether I agree with the Episcopals or not, they shouldn't even have it in that church house. They should have it at some queer bar somewhere or some queer meeting somewhere, not, not over here in this, in this church house. Because this church house, regardless of it being Episcopal, a Baptist, a Methodist, whatever, represents true religion or Christianity. So that's what it represents. And, and we, don't, we, don't, we don't say that, uh, that Sodomites is going to die and go to heaven when they die. Just like a drunk and a liar and a thief and a dishonest person. They don't get born again, they're going to die and go to hell. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first saying, spell your first and last names for me, Reverend. Fred, F-R-E-D, Phelps, P-H-E-L-P-S. And what affiliation, what church? Pastor, Westboro Baptist Church, Topeka, Kansas. And Westboro, how do you spell that? W-E-S-T-B-O-R-O. -O. In Topeka, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas. Okay, tell me why you're here today, sir. Well, I already told everybody in the civilized world I'll tell you again, uh, we, uh, this is an important event. We haven't seen anything quite like this or over this kind of subject since uh, we picketed Randy Schultz's funeral in uh, San uh, Francisco. Uh, we want to inject, or hope to inject, a little sanity and uh, gospel truth into what's uh, shaping up fast to be some kind of an orgy of uh, homosexual uh, propaganda and lies is like a Cecil B. DeMille epic going on here. It's not okay to be gay. We're sorry that young boy got uh, killed. Uh, I've told the governor here that if they convict anybody for that and they have the death penalty, I'll come uh, at my expense and flip the switch. But that's not the issue here. The issue here is this method by these uh, militant uh, uh, activist homosexual groups to use this as a fulcrum to propagate their filthy lifestyle and their filthy program and their uh, degenerate uh, political agenda. That's what they're doing and using this boy's uh, uh, funeral as, as a methodology for it. Why this occasion? This, we just came from speaking to the family for the first time and they want their, this funeral to be private, peaceful. Uh, it's a solemn occasion for them. They want folks to respect respect their wish to just say goodbye privately to their son and without all of this. Well, we've told these homosexuals for eight years now that if they want to have a private uh, funeral and keep quiet about it and go off with just the family, they won't hear from us. 
but when they turn it into something like this, it's too late to talk about having a private, uh, low-key, uh, respectful funeral. I mean, we believe a little bit of God's side ought to be injected into this mass hysteria here. I mean, it's not okay to be gay. I mean, it's a soul-damning, nation-destroying lifestyle. God's word for it, he destroyed Sodom because it was accepted and respected. He'll destroy this nation also. All the gospel preachers, look, 51 years ago, when those old Baptist preachers laid their hands on my head and ordained me to this ministry, they all preached this way. You didn't hear any kind of stuff that it's okay to be gay and agitating for gay rights and all the rest of it. These people don't deserve any special laws. They're sinners. What about Matt's parents who might be hurt by this? If they, Matt's parents, if they walk by, walk into the church, they hear you folks, could be hurt by that. that well, I hope hurt. they'll be helped by it. I know they're not going to be helped by these fags carrying on like they're carrying on. I'll tell you another thing. My mom, take bless her soul, taking me to the dentist to comfort me, used to say a little hurt now saves a big hurt later. That's what I would say to his parents. We're sorry for your loss. But if that boy could come back and stand, with us today, his message would be, according to Luke 16, listen to Fred Phelps, for God's sake, listen to Phelps, mom, dad, all of you, are you going to come where I am? The evidence is not good for it, you know, that that boy's in heaven. All right. Okay. Have you ever been to a fag parade? We didn't force they the fag to adopt it as their own label. Fag, fag, fag. <laughs> They're proud of that label. Proud of it. We didn't make that word up. And we sure didn't associate it with them. But we're not going to sanitize their lifestyle either. And we're not going to pretend that in this insanity where everyone is caterwauling for special laws, what more do you want from those ninnies who killed him besides the death penalty? You cannot kill them twice, so you can pass all the more laws you want, and it will not change this situation. And when There's you start no passing fear. those hate crime laws, you've just said that it's worse to kill someone of the same sex than it is if they picked up a woman in the bar and done it. That's what your hate crime laws say. They're your pet political correctness of the month. That's all a hate crime law is. You, by promoting hate crime laws for this crime of robbery and murder, you said it's worse to kill someone than it is to kill someone else. If they'd robbed a female that they picked up in a bar trying to take her out for sex and then robbed her, you wouldn't be all here. You're here because this is your political activity to promote fags and their filthy lifestyle. Somebody's got to put some balance to it. It's filthy, and you need to report the whole truth. Not just that he was killed in a robbery after he was picked up in a fag bar. Well, who told that child? Yeah. Westboro Baptist Church. Westboro Baptist Church. Who said he did that? I mean, what you do? How do you know they even killed him? How do you know he was even murdered by those kids? How do you know he had anything around him being gay? You don't think that had anything to do with being gay? The media, exactly, internationally, in the homosexual community. Nationally, internationally, has turned this into a referendum on all kids. Then why don't you go do it in your own town? What's your name? In your own town on TV, then. Make it media that way. What's your name? We're using it to remind you there's a God in heaven, a day of judgment, and it is not okay to be gay. Why weren't you out there protesting when the eight year old girl was raped and murdered in town? Why weren't you out there when he did that? She got raped by a crime. A pervert. That's what right. This guy has so tell, no right. Tell, tell He's a human being. That's right. He is a human being. Well, that's fine. I know my Bible. I came from Common and Gomorrah out of Jordan, and I know my Bible. And you're wrong. He's a human being. It don't matter. God loves everybody. Yeah, God loves everybody. Well, you just told another lie. Hey, no. God loves everybody. Get to know your Bible. Talk to me about Simon and Gomorrah. Why God destroyed the earth. If you know your Bible, you Yeah, well, I know my Bible. I happen to be full-blooded Greek. And I'm married, man. I'm a straight man. And I am not. He's a human being. I don't care about your protest in our town. You know your Bible. Yeah, I do know my Bible. 
loves everybody. Quote it for me. Oh, well, God do love. He does love everybody. Uh huh. The only reason you guys protest him because he's gay. And what about them two guys? What about them two guys? What about them two guys that walking out there taking his life away? Where from his family? Oh, he just came out of the wedlock, huh? Well, that's that's right. Judge not unless to be judged. Condemn not unless to be condemned. And that's right. Well, who gave you the right to judge him then? No, we're not hypocrites. We're just as good as you are. Oh, yeah. When are you going to quote me Romans 9, 13? You want to have a Bible question? I tell you what. Well, if you earth. guys don't recognize him as a human being, then you don't need to be yeah, out here. Go uh, right. He's a human being. He, he has... Well, he's a bird. Wow. He's a human being. He's a human. And he's in hell. And he's going to... Then you judge him right there. You judging him right there. Quit avoiding the question. What does God Roman judge him? And let God say. judge him, not you. Well, God judge him. Well, well, The only reason you are protesting because he's gay. Uh, Scott Collins. Uh, Collins, S C O L L I N S. Denver. My reaction is that these people don't have anything better to do with their time, and it's absolutely disgusting that they can't let us mourn in peace. Yes, the what? The, Bible the message that they're trying. The me- <laughs> they're not trying to send a message. They're they're making complete idiots of themselves. The message that they're trying to send is that they want to keep all of the human race divided and segregated. That's the message that they're trying to send. They're trying to send hate and violence, and they think that's okay. So in my book, they're not the good people. We're the good people, obviously. I feel really sorry for them. I feel really, really sorry for them. What do you hope to give to Matt today? Well, I knew Matt over the summer and stuff, and um, ever since this happened, it's been very, very difficult to keep a grip on reality. And what I'm going to give to Matt is everything that I can do in my power to change the way that things are and that everything that Matt wanted everything that Matt wanted to fight for I'm gonna fight for (laughs) it's Terry Summers T-E-R-R-Y S-U-M-M-E-R-S I see it's sad. Um, they call themselves Christians, and they're they're spouting nothing but words of hate towards another human being. Um, we're just trying to ignore them as much as we can. Um, they're not true Christians, that's for sure. They have no regard for human life or Matthew and his family at this point in time. Utterly appallable. But I want to make sure that people ignore them. Because I know that this just fuels into their fire and that we must ignore them. What are you going to do to counter their message that, you know, homosexuality is sodomy and sinful and that's on its way to hell? What do you, what do you want to do to counter that? I think we definitely need to educate people. Um, we need to respond to their message, but today is not the right place to do it. Um, today is for Matthew and his family, and that our hearts and our, our thoughts and our prayers are with him at this point in time. Matt was a friend of yours. I met him about three months ago. What do you think? Well, I think Matt would be proud of the response that we've taken. That we are we are one people gathering together to celebrate his life and to mourn his loss and to put our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers with his family at this time. Thanks. Okay. First of all, tell me your name. It's Amber Miller, A M B E R 
M I L L E R. Remember when you watched behind uh, Reverend Phelps, you said, God don't hate no one. I was wondering why, what you wanted to tell him. God doesn't hate anyone. I mean, it doesn't matter what this guy did. He didn't deserve to die this way. And this, these protesters here, I mean, they got, the little, they got kids out here doing this nonsense. They're getting these kids hating fags, gay people. Tell them about what, it just, know what, you know, they're, they're portraying Christianity as something of, of hate, and it's not, it's not. I mean, as a Christian, you know, Jesus Christ come in love and, and mercy and kindness and in truth, but this isn't. I mean, just because the Bible says, you know, homosexuality is a sin, you know, God doesn't hate the sinner. God hates the sin. He doesn't hate the sinner. And it just, it just drives me, I mean, it, it boggles my mind that these people are here at a funeral doing this, protesting. And I just, I, I don't know what I'd do if I got in that guy's face, you know. I'd probably just tell him the same thing. You know, God doesn't hate anyone. He doesn't. That's why when you're laying on your deathbed, you have those right, those last rights. And he'll forgive you when you get those last rights. Sin that does the sin. Yeah. He just hates the sins. That's right. Not the way this guy was taken. So, no. It's, it's just sick. It really is. It's a brutal, brutal death. And it... It's really terrible that these people have to come out of town to do this, to labelize Casper, Wyoming as something really bad now. We're not. We're just trying to get these protesters out of here. You know, we're not going to tolerate their nonsense. Can I ask so. why they're labelizing him as gay, everything gay, gay this, instead of just Matt Shepard? Why the media is, <laughs> is just... <laughs> yeah, why they have to make it so bad, I mean, that this, a gay student died. You know? every, every time they go towards, yeah, go towards it. It's a gay student. You know, it's not just Matt Shepard died. This guy died a brutal death. A gay student died a brutal death, and it's really, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Matthew. An angel with new wings in a place a world away. Matthew, an angel with new wings in a place a world away, can once again begin to sing, God took him in his arms today. He blessed his soul with loving care and took away his pain. His life story all would share, his memory on their hearts a stain. So young a heart destroyed, for a cause unforgotten. Another's mind deployed, the result of a tragedy rotten. The tragic hero that's hard to find, a martyr with great, great courage. God's lamb, all of my heart. I wish you only knew how much. You'll be happier with this brand new start. The world's heart you now have touched.